Well, good evening, fellow NRA members in Lewiston. I wish I had the opportunity to be there in person as I was several years ago to speak at the banquet and the auction of uh, Friends of the NRA. As many of you know, I have been a life member and on the National Board of Directors of the National Rifle Association since 1982. During that time, I've watched the organization grow, I've watched it strengthen, and I've watched all of you as you've grown much more active in your participation and support of the defense of our Second Amendment rights and certainly your privileges as a United States citizen to own a firearm. Now, of course, uh, you're involved this evening in a very important part of the overall effort that, is, uh, uh, that the NRA engages in. Uh, Friends of the NRA banquets uh, now produce over, have produced over $95 million worth of resources that teach um, uh, firearms education, hunter education, uh, uh, children's uh, informational programs, both in Idaho and across the nation. And of course, some of that money comes into the overall effort of our political support and uh, the defense of our Second Amendment rights. So first and foremost, thank you all very much for being there and being very, very supportive. I'm sure some of you have recognized what's happened right here in Washington, D.C., where I'm cutting this video. Just a few weeks ago, the D.C. Circuit Court ruled on a two-to-one decision that, yes, the Second Amendment meant exactly what all of us say it means. It's the right of the individual citizen to own and bear firearms, not the collective right of the state, if you will, or the militia under the control of the state. That was a tremendously positive statement in a city that has some of the most restrictive firearms control laws and ordinances in place. Well, of course, the chief of police of the district said, well, we're not going to abide by that, and uh, they're going to appeal it to the full D.C. Circuit Court. While this is good news, it's also a little it's a time to be a little nervous, because if this makes it all the way to the Supreme Court, you never quite know what the Supreme Court will say and do. We believe this will be a friendly Supreme Court, and if it is, it would be a profound statement, and it would be the first time that the United States Supreme Court would actually rule on the meaning of the Second Amendment. So it's very powerful, very important for all of us. While that's going on, and your support is coming in through activities like you're involved in tonight, let me also give you a little bit of a legislative update. Uh, we've been very successful over the last decade in strengthening the position of gun owners across America. Many of the issues that have brought before the Congress were voted down. Uh, as you know, I was able to move legislation through the Congress uh, in just the last few years uh, that protects gun manufacturers so that there isn't downstream liability because someone misuses a firearm at the street level. Uh, and of course, uh, the trial bar and many of our urban areas were filing lawsuits to try to destroy the gun manufacturers, saying they're really liable because they know that that firearm could kill a person, and therefore they're liable for it. Uh, again, we were successful in saying no. That responsibility lies on the individual citizen and not those who produce the firearm, just like those who might produce an automobile would be responsible if somebody got in it drunk and drove it and killed someone? Uh, no, of course not. The, the, the auto manufacturer is not responsible. But once again, the trial bar has continued to pursue those lines of argument and those kinds of lawsuits over the years. In the Congress today, there are at least three or four anti-gun uh, pieces of legislation that have been introduced. Over in the House side, Congressman McCarthy of New York has reintroduced uh, the banning of assault weapons or the Clinton gun ban that uh, died several years ago and uh, liberal Democrats, especially liberal Democrats, were not able to bring it up and get it reauthorized. I was successful in blocking it here in the Senate. There are also other efforts out there. Believe it or not, there are some who say that foreign courts who rule against gun ownership and the right to own a gun, it's the foreign court that we ought to adhere to. And if they so rule, well, then 
we ought to abide by those rulings. That's the worst form of internationalism I've ever seen. It's complicit, if you would, with uh, some of the thinkings of the NRA and the international movement to ban firearms from any ownership by any private citizen. Well, you and I both know, when the government is the sole owner of firearms, you and I then become the subjects of a government or the victims of a government and not the free citizen that this country has been built on and the right of that free citizen to prosper and to defend oneself. I'm always a bit amazed when I hear somebody saying, oh yes, I'm all for gun rights, uh, uh, I hunt. Well, hunting is important uh, and we do view, value that in our state. But the Second Amendment is very clear and it's all about the right of the free citizen to, to defend oneself, one's property, and one's loved ones. It is an issue of self-defense. And in this country, we have believed that to be a supreme law of the land. And so I was pleased to see in probably one of the more liberal circuit courts of the country that positive ruling. Again, your support is necessary and needed. And it comes through your active membership uh, uh, in organizations like the NRA or in activities like the one you're engaged in tonight. It really is all about our Constitution and our Second Amendment rights. Thanks so much for being there and being active in defense of your freedoms.